This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for therapy. If you are experiencing mental distress, please seek professional help. We are, we are, we are whole symbol Welcome to the Wellness Project Podcast. I am your host, Wilson. Each episode aims to bring mental health awareness through exploring psychoeducation, scholarly literature, professional interviews, and the personal stories of people's journey to mental wellness. So with that said, let's get started. So go home, go line your pockets with anything gold. If you are considering therapy or in the market for a different mental health therapist, you should contact Cornerstone Behavioral Health. At Cornerstone Behavioral Health, the goal is to be a global voice for trauma recovery. They are a 100% telehealth agency, providing mental health counseling and medication management for adults in Ohio. That's right, they offer a free consultation and accept all major insurance companies or private pay. If you go to cornerstonebehavioralhealth.org and click on the services tab, you can read the bios of the therapists and even request one of them specifically to talk more about your mental health needs. To learn more about Cornerstone Behavioral Health, just visit cornerstonebehavioralhealth.org to register for a free consultation and response within just 48 hours. Hope starts here. Last night I was um, just kind of thinking about the impact that being a therapist has had on my own life. I was sort of doing the math and I've been a therapist for six years going on seven. So with that, I mean, you figure 20 clients a year that, that puts me at over 120 people that have impacted my life. And I'm sure that I've impacted theirs. It's, it's just a really, it's a beautiful thing that I get paid to talk with people and to share in that human experience. I was thinking last night about probably one of the first folks that I had the honor of, of working with. He, um, oh, he was probably five or four years old. He was on the autism spectrum. He was nonverbal and I would say pretty aggressive. He would hit, he'd kick, he'd throw things. He'd, he'd even try to bite me. But I just had this, this unconditional positive regard for, for him and, and, and trying to teach him at the time, I think I was working on potty training mostly, but also just trying to get him to, to speak. And that experience has had a lasting impact on my life. So many people had tried to get him to talk. It's, it, it, it's, it's hard to even put into words the experience of hearing someone speak for the first time. It, it really impacted my life. It put me on a course of just, you know, wanting to be that helping professional in any way that I can. I remember that when he would come into the center that I was working at, it, it, you know, I would say he was probably would be described as dirty. You know, his, his fingernails were long and just dirt and the poor little bottoms of his feet were always black from walking around barefoot. So I, I would take this plastic, uh, toy bin and dump out all of the toys and, and fill the container with just soapy water and soak his little feet in it and clean his feet, you know? This was years ago, and I, I, I still think about him. And I don't know that he would realize how much of an impact he had on my life. 
and wanting to be part of that helping profession. If you believe that a person's life can change in a moment, then how many moments make up a lifetime? Take a moment to reflect on your sources of strength. What actually motivates you? What drives you? How do you navigate through difficult times? You see, these are pivotal questions that we often overlook, but are critical in understanding our own mental resilience. Here's a little practical daily activity that you can foster self-awareness and positive self-talk. Can you talk about yourself to yourself for just one minute? What advice would you give yourself? And if this feels challenging, try this little exercise. Look at your hand and label each finger to represent different stages of your life. Your pinky as infancy, your ring finger as childhood, your middle finger as your teenage years. It's kind of ironic. Your pointer finger as the emerging adulthood. And then your thumb as the self. Another powerful way to practice positive self-talk is by using what are called self-esteem sentence stems. Here are just a few prompts that can help you get started. I've always wanted to. I'm secretly afraid of. This week, I would enjoy doing. The last one is, I often look forward to. For a positive impact on your self-esteem, you have to ensure that your self-affirmations are positively focused. It's essential to recognize that feeling overwhelmed is not a mental illness. Everyone feels overwhelmed at times. It's our natural mental system's way of signaling us to pause and reflect. When you feel overwhelmed, ask yourself, what do I want? How did I get here? You have to accept your current state. That's critical in a step in your own personal journey. If you haven't caught on yet, I'm just kind of running through some thoughts that I've had for a while. One of the things that I do, and my wife can contest to this, is almost on like a nightly basis, I just kind of sit and have to reflect on my life, the work that I do. And then, you know, part of wanting to be a mental health educator is, is to give people concepts that make sense, metaphors that, that they can hold on to. Um, to be honest, I mean, you know, there isn't one manual to mental wellness, um, which I, I think is kind of exciting in some sense and uh, maybe discouraging and frustrating in other ways, because as a therapist, when I'm working with people, it can it can be difficult uh, at times to find activities that, um, you know, how should I say this uh, in like a respectful way? Some of the activities are just cheesy. You know, they're, 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 <laughs> some are corny. Um, some are very elementary. I had an adult a while ago that I was working with. When I say adult, I mean over the age of 18. Um, and I asked them what, what their last therapist did with them. And they said they gave them a coloring book. Like, <laughs> I mean, I was kind of shocked. I was like, in your, you, you were how old? <laughs> like, I, I mean, trust me. I mean, I love me a good coloring book, but like, you got to kind of find things that are, I mean, like not only age appropriate, but also engaging. And uh, one of my hopes with, by doing these, these podcasts is just, allowing the audience to process and hear sort of my own reflections and things that I bring into the therapeutic space. Um, so I'm, 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 what I'm getting at is I'm constantly screening for mental health activities. And one of the ones that has kind of been really cool to work with people on, and I have witnessed um, some of the benefits that have come from it. And it's called the anxiety jar. The anxiety jar is a therapeutic tool commonly ut utilized in cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. And it's, it's to help people manage and understand their anxiety. This technique 
widely endorsed by mental health professionals, involves writing down anxieties or worries on slips of paper and placing them in a jar. This process can assist individuals in externalizing their concerns and reflecting on them in more manageable ways. It's been interesting. I, I, I have utilized this with folks. And uh, again, I, I think it does maybe have a little bit of a silliness to it. But from a metaphorical standpoint, like you're, you're in the moment acknowledging the worry and the anxiety and you're placing it in the jar to address it later because as people could probably agree with me on in the moment it's very intense and your sort of your perception is maybe a little skewed because of the influence of the worry or the anxiety so by by acknowledging it and putting it into the jar you can come back to it later and what i have found for those that are in therapy bring that jar into the session and be able to actually process those thoughts and feelings when you're in a different state with your therapist. It's, it's been really, I think powerful and really helpful for the therapist as well, because not all the time, but sometimes people will will come in and they're like, you know, I was anxious. Well, what made you anxious? And it's like, you might not remember some of the details. So I think it's got multiple layers of benefit to, you know, being able to one, acknowledge the anxiety. Uh, I also had people rate it from a scale of one to 10 on intensity as they were experiencing it. And then again, going back through that jar, whether you're meeting with your therapist weekly or monthly to then go back through those and then reassess either the severity of them, but also to look for patterns and themes you know, uh, I've, I've found that for some clients, it seems like a lot of anxiety is related to work for other clients. It's related to home life, who knows, but by, by using the anxiety jar activity, it sort of allows for the therapist and the client to not only track the anxieties, but then to also start looking at them in different ways. I'd say that another theme that that does come up often is um, the idea that you can plan your life out in, and I'll just put it this way, in just unrealistic detail. Um, you know, t- too often when I am working with with folks that they they say things like, you know, I'm not where I thought my life would be. Um, I should have been further along. Uh, I was hoping to be at this point in my life by now. And, you know, that's sure, right? I mean, I know I'm not where I thought I should be in my current state. But then part of me wants to look at kind of like the the influence of thinking like that. And what kind of a state of mind is that pattern of thinking that you're not good enough, you weren't, you know, you didn't achieve this expectation? What kind of mindset that put you in to move forward from that. I I just, there seems to be very little motivation behind that to change it. So I sort of often have to work with clients on setting just lofty expectations and, you know, meticulously planning every detail without allowing themselves to be present and experience life as it unfolds. Like that's part of the beauty in it. It's important to remember that life is not a predetermined script. You live it as you go. In other words, like think of life as a, as a canvas. I love painting. Every day you add new strokes of paint to it. Sometimes I've had to completely repaint a painting. Just paint right over it. You don't see the full picture before you start. Part of the the enjoyment is that you create it as you go. Every decision, experience, and emotion adds color and texture. The reality is that while the final masterpiece may be unknown, it is uniquely yours you create and discover along the way. I was talking with someone a few weeks ago and I was like, you don't write the book of life and then read it. I, I, 
for some reason <laughs> that that metaphor makes sense in my mind. It might not to the listener, but like, you know, you can, you, you, you write it as you live it. You don't get to write the whole book and then go back and read it and get every chapter and word that you wanted to have your life experience. I also try to uh, help people realize that you don't get to rewrite chapters either. You can reread them and there is some benefit to that, but you definitely don't get to rewrite them. It's constantly moving forward. And quite frankly, I would imagine some of the famous authors that we all love and enjoy would admit that they didn't know the end of the story until they wrote it. And for a lot of them, they never know or knew the impact that their book had on people's lives. And that's what's beautiful about it. Hold each other close, walking in the rain. You were like a picture and not a frame. You were like the air and not a plane. By the way, at The Wellness Project, we have merchandise. That's right, all mental health awareness themed products. Uh, we've got artwork, we've got shirts, we've got hats, uh, we've got candles. We're gonna have uh, one for like anxiety awareness, depression awareness, wellness awareness, which is actually out right now. That's right, you can get your own wellness awareness candle. What does it smell like, right? Mm, you have to come in and check it out. But if you hit me up on uh, Facebook or you can email me and I can give you that information and thank you for your support. There's a million places I could go, it's so easy.